Hi, so a question that comes up a lot when um, I'm helping people with the hard end of WeWeb stuff is how to get these various modules that we might be working with in WeWeb, like, you know, Plaid or things that introduce pop-up elements or things that are, you know, event-driven like, um, uh, like, like capture or security type things. Uh, how do we get them to feed information back into WeWeb so that WeWeb can then you know keep on doing its work? I, I sometimes call this going over the wall, where you have information that's happening on the JavaScript side and information and things are happening on the WeWeb side. And the answer is going to be making use of workflows and having stuff that's happening from outside of WeWeb be able to trigger workflows that happen within it. So let's talk about what that means for a second. We can have, uh, let's just add to our element here, we're going to have a uh, paragraph, right? And this paragraph is going to have text. And we're going to, uh, just for the sake of things, we're going to create a variable. We're going to call it p te uh, text, And we're going to bind that text. Um, and we're going to say, well, this p text uh, should be part uh, of um, th this text here, should be bound to p text. We'll go here and we will say, from project p text. Great, and, and now you can see it doesn't have any text anymore. Uh, so we can solve that by updating the variable, right? And we can update the variable to a workflow. And so I can drag over here and we will say we have a workflow here and we're going to call this, uh, say we're going to do lightning bolt, which is how we set up actions for a button. And we can have an action that's going to uh, change variable value. And that value uh, of p text, we're going to set to I clicked the first button, right? Close. And then if I were to just run this for a second by going into preview mode, I click on the text and button, it says I click the first button. And that's, that's how it works, right? I'm able to use a workflow to change a variable and that variable then changes the element that's on the page or that workflow could send new information to the back end or do any sort of other interesting things that we want WeWeb to do. So the, the, the next key question is how could we disconnect that from just being tied directly to the button? How can we have some arbitrary other piece of code maybe be able to run that workflow? And if you're a little bit more advanced than WeWeb, you may have seen this before, where you can uh, say, well, let's we'll make another button to illustrate this point. Uh, but we can have go to the cans up here and we can go to... Um, you know, go to our, instead of adding a variable, we can add a workflow. And we can create a new workflow. We'll call it, you know, my first workflow. And we can say that workflow, which by the way, just runs on execution, right? So there's no direct event. There's no click button that goes along with it. Um, we can say, well, this event is supposed to, um, we're going to have it change variable value. And the variable we're going to have it change is called ptext. And we're going to change it to, I ran this from the workflow. And then we will, say close to that. Now, how then do you invoke that uh, that workflow? And we're going to do that from the second button, and we'll call it, you know, second button. And the and in this button, we're going to go here, say add a workflow, and we're going to add an action. And that action is actually, instead of going to be, dire instead of directly changing the variable value, we're going to say we're going to run that workflow. And when we run that workflow, um, we'll tell it to run my first workflow, close, and then we press play. And then when we run the second button, it says I ran this from the workflow. So that's now each of these but each of these buttons have a different job. We can do more than that. We can say that the workflow that we have created, not just something we invoke directly, right? We go to my first workflow, but we can give it what are called parameters. And parameters are like arguments or an inputs to a function to find out what its context needs to be. So we can say new text. And that's just gonna be a type text. We'll leave it like that, although it could be anything. Um, we will say that we're going to add an action here, uh, which is going to be, um, uh, right, so, so, so instead of saying that the new variable to I ran this from the workflow, we're going to bind it to the thing from the action and we click on lightning bolt, clicking on this parameter, right? So now we can say um, that when we run this, uh, second workflow, the uh, second button, right, which invokes that workflow, it needs an argument, right? Because now it says, okay, you're running my first workflow, but you need to give it arguments. What arguments are going to give it? We're going to give it, you know, I ran this from the parameter new text. And we'll say close. And let's try pressing, uh, you know, the eyeball. And so the first one, I click the first button. The second one, I click the parameter new text, right? So the parameter that we just set controls what the text is going to be.
And if I want to uh, change um, what that text is, I actually go to the second button now, because second button is controlling in here what argument is passed. And if I just call this you know, param instead, and I say close, and I say eyeball, see, now it says param new text. So, so far we haven't really done anything new though, right? We've created a little bit of centralization of your workflows. You can imagine how you can sort of turn them into like, you know, chunks of workflow. But the really interesting opportunity here is being able to access these workflows from outside of WeWeb and in other JavaScript that you might have incorporated into your project, like libraries you're loading in, uh, which might have like an on success type event. And you want to be able to then have on success go invoke this workflow based on like a code or something that you got from whatever that library does. How do we do that? Uh, for this, I'm going to open up my friend, which is right click here, and I'm going to click on inspect, and that brings up the dev tools. I can click on console and ignore most of this other stuff. And, and this is something you can run from any arbitrary JavaScript, both stuff you've loaded into WeWeb, uh, as well as stuff you might have from the content script or things you bring in from uh, script tag or the WeWeb embedder from state change, uh, where we can use dubdublib. And dubdublib is really cool uh, because it has in here a method called execute workflow that will allow you to execute any of those workflows that you made from the cans over here. But how do you know what to invoke? Now, when we do this, we see that it takes two arguments uh, called E and T. So I will say, uh, and then, and it's going to give me an error because the workflow is not found. And the reason workflow is not found is because there's no workflow called DFG DFG. We need to find out what the identifier is of that workflow. So is it just called my first workflow? And it is still not found. And the way we get that information is actually by clicking on this little dev icon up here and with a little, little uh, carrot and the underscore. And we click where it says show dev informations and turn that into hide dev information. If it already says hide, you're already set. And then we can click back into here uh, and now we have an ID that goes along with this workflow. So just to show you how we're getting here, we go to can, we go to workflows, we pick that workflow, and you have this ID, this is blue text up here. We click on that, and then, so now what I can do is say, well, let's just introduce all of that. So now we can say text and button, we can say second button, and then if we try to run it from this, well, kind of nothing happens. Why does nothing happen? Well, that's because the second thing here, this DFG, DFG doesn't make any sense. So instead what we would do is actually say, we're going to put this into an object. We're going to use these little curly braces. And we would say new text, which is the parameter name that you have in your workflow, right? So you have my first workflow and the parameter is called new text. New text, I'll say colon, because that's the key. And then I'll say DFG, DFG, just because it's funny and that's what I previously put in. And we will go back over to here. If I run that, see it shows DFG, DFG. So it will also, uh, from the point of view of your JavaScript, run as a promise. And that means if you await uh, you know, the uh, execute workflow or do a then on it, um, and we can say, you know, console.log. Congratulations. Right, so it will run that. We can change up what this is going to be in here. Right, and it will add whatever those things are. One of the very cool things is the code that you run from out here actually works even when you're in edit mode as opposed to being in eyeball mode. Let me switch to being in edit mode and I'll demonstrate that for you. Uh, where we click on the console and we go here and we'll say, Right, and then it adds that stuff over there. So that means in your callback that you have associated with whatever this function is, you're going to work. Uh, you're going to just add in the www the www dot execute workflow, get the workflow that you pulled uh, from the um, you know from this blue text here that was available to you because you're now set to sh sh showing your dev informations, which is why it says hide because that's the action, uh, and then uh, then you have access to it. Now, there's one more little weird piece of consideration here. Uh, let me show you something, uh, which is if this second button uh, did not actually reference that workflow, right? So basically, so, so if that workflow exists, but it's not being referenced from an existing piece of code in WeWeb, well, let me show you what happens when I publish. Oh. 
Okay, cool. Uh, there it is, the um, uh, the preview. Uh, that took a little bit longer. We sort of cut that in the middle here. Um, and if I go click on the open, uh, you're going to find we have the first button, which does the thing. Second button doesn't do anything anymore, right? We took out that workflow. Um, but now if I were to bring up my you know, uh, dev tools using the same way I did before, and I say I'm going to go over to the console, I'm going to clear out all that stuff, and then I run my thing again, you'll notice nothing happens. And the workflow wasn't found. Why was the workflow not found? The workflow wasn't found because the way WeWeb publishes, it looks for all the stuff that it knows needs to be referenced uh, from somewhere on the, uh, on the project. But if it is not currently referenced, uh, it will... Um, We'll include it in the publications. Actually, I think it's pretty much sure looking for the ID in question. So let's try adding the ID uh, back into here. So we're going to go back over to our um, our data and go to our workflow, and we're going to go to my first workflow. We're just going to grab this ID because this ID is the thing that we really need to save. Uh, and now we're going to say, well, inside our not that workflow, but somewhere else on the page. Uh, like on the, um, uh, you know, maybe on that previous button we did, close. And we will say, um, well, we'll close up that workflow. And then we go back to this. Let's just take a look at this workflow for a second. And let's, um, or we can, you know, on page, we can say, let's just sort of add a, add a workflow to it. Um, and we'll do trigger workflows on page load. And we can just sort of have something that does really nothing at all. Right, well, let's have it um, custom JavaScript. And let's see if we can just say, you know, just add, add a comment and have that run. Let's see if that works. And close and, and publish. Uh, and we are going to try running this now. Uh, we're going to go open up again in our start from scratch. Again, the first button works. Again, the second button doesn't do anything. Uh, and we're going to just ask whether this works now. Yeah, see, it works. See, the, all it was looking for, uh, you can see it a little more if I want, and of course I can I can change that to my heart's content and things and stuff, right? So the um, all I had to do in WeWeb, right, is make sure that somewhere it referenced that ID. It's just looking for anywhere in, essentially its code base as it thinks about it, to make sure that ID exists. You can embed it onto a, um, on, onto a variable, onto, a um, you know, onto an element that's on the page. And the way I just did it in a way that would have no other side effects is by putting it into a workflow, not that workflow, uh, putting it into a workflow on the page, right? Trigger workflows, workflow, and then introducing this little bit of custom JavaScript. And the custom JavaScript has nothing but a comment line. That's what those slash slash thing does. And by doing that, I guarantee that the ID of the workflow is present. That then pulls in the workflow and makes it available to the external JavaScript, even if you're not calling it from anywhere inside WeWeb. This is um, you know, a, a thing I found a lot of people get stuck on, uh, is how to make sure that the um, workflows all get across to um, you know, your, your other side. And so my recommendation is when you have a workflow and you want to call that workflow from the outside, you know, go to page load or, or some other workflow you're working with and just, you know, make one here and let's just say, you know, a store, you know, workflow IDs, right? And you can just sort of warehouse them in these comments. That way they have absolutely no effect on the performance of the whole operation, but they can, uh, but they make sure they remain available to you on the other side. Hopefully, this all gives you some sense of how you can work with WeWeb uh, and with any external JavaScript library that you choose to bring to the party, including ones over from, say, script tag, um, or from you know the other libraries you might use, like Plaid or you know other financial libraries, security libraries, whatever they might be. Uh, and uh, you know, going forward, if you, if this is helpful to you, I hope that you'll you know. Let us know in the comments and also what projects you're trying to integrate with WeWeb. And if you're finding that you are you know, getting into things that are even more sticky, well, the hardest 5% of uh, these no-code projects is exactly what we do uh, as a community and in our office hours over at State Change. We love to work on the, the novel problems together. Uh, and I hope that this uh, little video here has made this problem a little bit less novel and a little bit less scary and hopefully out of the 5% for you.